Evan Peters, a quarterback. Rolls out. Man for the Braves. One two pitch on the way. Driven to right field, out there towards the corner. That is a fair ball home run. A three run homer by Eddie Rosario. He just electrified the way coup for the Falcon victory, and he nailed it. Atlanta wins as time expires in Miami. Oh, welcome to Interesting to See, your daily sports podcast about news, narratives, takes, and gambling. I am Nick, your dashing host. I'm looking at myself in the camera right now, and i got to say, my face is getting kind of fat. It's football season. We're hunking down. Hunkering down? Bunkering down? Whatever. Who cares? Ah, got a lot to talk to you about today, specifically about how this weekend in college football and professional football, for basically the second weekend in a row, it was... Utter trash. Um, not very many good games, and the big teams were not interesting, and not a lot happened. But we're going to start with the, that's right, the Pennsylvania State University, who lost in nine overtimes. The college football wanted to change the rules for overtimes, where after a certain amount, they just start doing two-point conversions. So it seems like it's longer, but it's not. It's not the same thing as nine overtimes. Calm down. Everybody online, the narrative you're going to have to watch out for is they're trying to make the game safer. It used to be you had to keep trying to score touchdowns. But then they made it just a shootout where it's just two-point conversions. Illinois wins. The statistics from the Illinois upset over number whatever Penn State were frankly astounding. I'm going to pull them up for you real quick. I had the highlight up. I lost the uh, the stats. The The Illini ran the... I haven't seen a team run the ball down someone's throat like this in a long while. Like a long while. The Illini had 395 yards of total offense. 38 of that was passing. That's 357 rushing yards. I watched a touchdown drive where they were, well, there wasn't a touchdown drive. They, a bunch of penalties pushed them back and eventually got a field goal, I believe. But they literally didn't call a pass play until they were in the red zone. It was just over and over and over and over and over and over. And it was incredible. That's not Penn State football for sure. That was the biggest upset and probably, I don't know, the closest game of the weekend in college football, but not the best game of the weekend in college football. Pittsburgh was a seven-point favorite against Clemson at home. They have uh, one of the five best quarterbacks or so in Kenny Pickett. They rushed the field, which is an absolute garbage move. That is like, again, same thing as Iowa. You're just not unranked Clemson, who you are a favorite over. You love, you're so obsessed with them that beating them at all means rushing the field. Well, Nothing says you're not a football school anymore like doing that. So Penn, Pittsburgh is 6-1. and one. The highest-ranked team, who's uh, or the lowest-ranked team who's undefeated right now, and it's because everybody, like, no one knows what to do. Wake Forest is ranked 13th. They beat Army 70-56. to 70-56. Coastal Carolina had their first loss of the year. They lost to App State in Boone, North Carolina. They're now ranked 24th. They will have 132 ranking points, right? So just for context, the ranking points is every for every position you get or whatever, you get a point. So the unanimous number one is Georgia. The unanimous number two is Cincinnati. Unanimous number three is Alabama. After, so that's, they have a, what? Georgia has 1,500 first place votes or 1,500 total points. BYU has 44 total points. So that means we just don't know. Like the, the AP rankings have become so irrelevant that they kind of can't even do a top 25 because then after, like, the gap between Coastal Carolina and BYU is like 100. And BYU must have had three 25th place votes and now they're 25th. I have no idea. It really is uh, a mess. AP rankings are stupid. A lot of rivalry games this week. Their midseason rivalry games happened this week and they were mostly duds. Tennessee scared Alabama for a little bit, but in the end, Alabama hangs on, of course, and they did this whole cigar smoking thing. Let's see if I, I have a clip. I don't know if I want to play it. Let's see if, if I have it pulled up, I'll play it. If I don't, I won't. Um, so they start smoking cigars in that rivalry. That's what you do. If you win the rivalry, you smoke cigars. So it's kind of a cool moment uh, for Alabama to see the hazy, the hazy stadium. It was pretty cool, but that hasn't been a rivalry for a while. The Magnolia Bowl, LSU and, and Ole Miss is kind of a dirty little rivalry. Um, as an Ole Miss alumni, we definitely hate LSU more than Mississippi State, I believe. 
That game was not close. Um, I kind of thought that Ed Orgeron would have the boys playing tough. He did not. They got waxed by Ole Miss. He's not known for defense, but wow, that was unbelievable. And then Notre Dame and USC, technically a rivalry still. Again, I do not remember the last time those two schools played where they were both good. And actually, I don't remember the last time the two schools played when USC was good. It must have been like 2015 or 16. So it's... USC has fallen a long, long, long way. They looked uh, feisty for a minute, but Notre Dame was good. Scary moment for Kyle Hamilton, the Notre Dame safety. Looked like he got hurt in a non-contact knee injury. It doesn't appear to be an ACL, but I suspect that he's going to panic and pull out of the rest of the college football season. I definitely think that's possible because he is set to make millions of dollars. Mock drafts, the lowest mock draft that I respect has him going seventh overall. The highest mock draft that I respect has him going second overall. Very good football player. Speaking of uh, draft picks, let's check in with the presumptive number one overall pick, Kayvon Thibodeau, after a big win against UCLA. UCLA is a team that no one can figure out. Oregon beats UCLA at, a Rose, at the Rose Bowl. And here's the post-game interview with Kayvon Thibodeau and uh, Holly Rowe. I mean, it's amazing. It's always a blessing to be out here in front of our fans, the Royal Ducks. Pay attention. <laughs> Did you hear it? Yeah, let's do it again. Okay, okay. What did they do? Hold on. Okay, on. Ha <laughs> ha, buddy. Uh, he's just emotional. He's a freak. He's so good. And it's so like, oh my God, he's so good. He's going to probably, he's the best football player in the draft um, and best football player in the country. No doubt about it. It's just whether or not quarterbacks go first. Speaking of post-game interviews, Mike Leach, how do you feel about Halloween candy? Uh, gummy bears for sure. Sour or regular? Uh, um, the, the, the hair bow. It's got to be mm -hmm. the hair bow ones. I agree. And then, uh, the Let's other skip ahead on this. Is, you know, there's still candy innovation, although a while back I found that Europe had better candy than we did overall. <laughs> nah. Man, I never thought Mike Leach would be praising Europe for anything. Mississippi State, they glottal stomp. I stole that from somewhere. They glottal stomp Vanderbilt, who's not a very good football team. Mike Leach has the boys playing okay. All right, let's go to professional football where I'm going to make an episode out of... I'm going to make an episode... <laughs> Four Super Bowl. Shh, Gronk, shut up. Uh, YouTube has been freezing lately, and it makes me want to choke someone. I'm going to make an episode out of the San Francisco 49ers. They are an absolute mess, and it's it's one of the weirdest narrative things. I can't get over it. I'm going to die on this hill, and I'm going, I'm going to expose them. They deserve to be exposed because the way that they're treated in media and by other people is unbelievable. And the crazy thing is that Kyle Shanahan, who's the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, his dad, Mike Shanahan, had the same kind of treatment. But as the dust is settling, it's, it's just like they have a weird hold on everybody in the NFL. It's, it's like, like worshipy. Mike Shanahan won two Super Bowls with the Denver Broncos, which is successful. However, he was then awful, garbage. So it wasn't him at all. It was, get this, Terrell Davis and Shannon Sharp. And who was the uh, steroid guy? Bromanowski. John Elway. John, John Elway. So then all of a sudden, Mike Shanahan's a genius. He goes to Washington and is utter garbage. Kyle Shanahan, his overall record as a, as a coach is 31 and 39. That includes a 13 and 3 season. So except for the year that he went 13 and 3, here are the San Francisco 49ers records. 2017, 6 and 10. 2018, 4 and 12. 2020, 6 and 10. And currently in 2021, 2 and 4. I cannot understand what's going on with the worship of Kyle Shanahan. We're going to get into it, and I guess we can continue to do it right now, but there are no more excuses. He traded three first-round draft picks to move up to the third overall pick to draft a player that apparently is not ready to play. He better get ready, because if that guy's not one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, the Niners are going to suck for a long time. It's unbelievable how obsessed people are with him, and I say all of this to discuss the fact that the Indianapolis Colts whipped their ass this is it a revenge game for DeForest Buckner I believe he had a sack I think we could check on that I, I know I know he had a, a, some pressures but I'm not 100% sure he get a sack he did get a sack and they traded him for a first round pick that they used on Javon Kinlaw stupid Javon Kinlaw is hurt and just not very good DeForest Buckner they lose DeForest Buckner and all of a sudden whoa they're not good at defense anymore how about that this Niners thing has to be the story of the year for me because people were picking them to go to the Super Bowl like they, but then this year guys they haven't had injuries Kyle Shanahan has benched three consecutive, three consecutive second-round picks because for reasons no one can figure out. 
Dante Pettis. I don't even know where he is anymore. He just, Kyle Shanahan didn't like him. Now he doesn't like Brandon Ayuk. He's got to play harder. Kyle, you can't be so annoying about being such a know-it-all and then draft these guys and then bench them. You're like, I don't know. The Niners are, they're frauds. They are Elizabeth Holmes, Billy McFarland level frauds. And that's the story for me. And I guess maybe we'll, we'll do an entire episode then on that one day. Let's go to the rest of the NFL. Just run down the storylines. Man, I cannot reiterate enough what a garbage weekend of football this was. Just utter trash. There were a couple ass kickings that I kind of got behind and I enjoyed a lot. Made a lot of money on a couple of games, which is great. Got finally back in the gambling scene since week two. Just been busy and I forgot. The Titans beat the piss out of the Chiefs. And Patrick Mahomes got hurt, but he didn't get hurt until like the fourth quarter, guys. Like they, the Chiefs are not going to the playoffs. In fact, that'd be an interesting bet to make right now. The Chiefs are trash. They're just not good. The Titans destroyed them. Destroyed them. They just outmanned them. They moved them on, on the offensive line. They moved them on the defensive line. And the Titans' defense is not good. Compared to the rest of the NFL, they are not good at all. Another ass-kicking that was awesome, the Bengals... Uh, just annihilated the Ravens. In fact, Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, the 2018, 2018, 2018 and 2019 MVPs were benched or taken out of the game with the combined total 17 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So that means that be the, between the 30 minutes left in the, the Chiefs' fourth and the, and, and the Ravens' fourth, 15 minutes, both 17 minutes didn't have Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. They were benched in an NFL game. It was incredible another part of this game i guess like maybe we should probably ah, i can't i already find the highlights but we don't have time to do highlights this is monday morning show jamar chase had eight catches for 201 yards and a touchdown including an 81 yard touchdown which people will give him credit for and he deserves credit for but the ravens didn't tackle him they didn't respect him tj uzma Uz, is it uzma uzama tj Uz, cj uzama the tight end for the Bengals, who looks like he is a bouncer at a vin diesel nightclub just a huge dude he is he's awesome he had two Three catches, 91 yards, and uh, <laughs> two touchdowns. He had a great fantasy day. I want to pick him up in waivers if you're a fantasy person. The Bengals are now, get this, if the, if the regular season ended today and seven games through the season, I think we can start to have that conversation. The playoffs are around the corner. If the regular season ended today, the Bengals are, without tiebreakers, the number one team in the AFC. And who's got a future on them to make the playoffs? This guy does. What's up? The Panthers and the Giants played one of the worst football games nobody's ever seen on Sunday. At one point, it was 3-2, to two, and then it was 3-5 to five at halftime, and it was just garbage. Sam Darnold sucks at football. Uh, Colin Coward, we should force Colin Coward to watch these games and talk about it to us because he tried to tell us how good the USC kid is, and he blows. The Panthers have a great defense, but at a certain point, if you can't move the ball, you're just completely screwed. The only good games of the day were the Falcons and the Dolphins. And the Lions and the Rams, the Falcons and the Dolphins. The Dolphins came all the way back, but they left Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, too much time on the clock. And then the Dolphins, who are head coached by Robert Flores, who comes from the Belichick tree. And that's the same kind of dipshittery that happens from Matt Patricia and Romeo Cornell and Mike Frabel. Even though there was not that much time left on the clock and the Falcons would have to go down the field, they still played man coverage. Well, Kyle Pitts is better than any man you've ever coached, Robert Flores. All of them combined, in fact. Stephon Gilmore... Man coverage with a guy like Stefan Gilmore or Xavier Howard or Rodney Harrison, I don't care. Covering Kyle Pitts in man coverage, even in a rookie, even as a guy that's only played seven games, that's stupid. You're not Bill Belichick. You're stupid. And you deserve to lose. The Dolphins are another mess. They have one win, and it's going to be gross. The Deshaun Watson thing, we'll probably save that for a day when there's not much news, but this is... It sounds like the Panthers and the Dolphins are going to trade for him, which is disgusting to me because he's facing uh, 10 complaints of sexual assault, which means there hasn't been anything filed, but there's an investigation in 21 civil suits of sexual assault, and you're going to trade for this guy? And then the, the NFL's going to have to step in and, what, bench him? I don't even know what's going to happen. The Patriots, in another ass-whooping, they destroy the Jets. The Jets' uh, future quarterback, Zach Wilson, got hurt. It looked like he might have, could have sort of maybe come back in, but if you're an owner of the team, you call the coach and say, sit him down. The Raiders annihilate the Eagles. The Eagles are bad. Jalen Hurts, man, great guy. <laughs> He is an awesome guy. He's just not very good at quarterback. However, if you're a gambling man or a sports futures outcomes investor like myself, he's great at fantasy football. And he's great to bet on. The Lions gave the Rams everything they can handle. The Detroit Lions, they come out on third and nine. They hit a home run with a screen pass to DeAndre Swift. Then they get the onside kick. Then they onside kick, a sneak onside kick. They get it back. The Rams seem to force what appears to be sort of a three and out. Then they fake the punt and they get it and they eventually get a field goal. The Lions kick four field goals and one touchdown. They lose to the Rams 28 to 19. 
Uh, Matthew Stafford had a big day. Jared Goff is not very good at football. Uh, but the Lions and the Rams is the only saving grace in the afternoon window because the Cardinals crushed the Texans and the Bucks crushed the Bears. The Bucks beating the Bears was honestly like a mercy rule thing. I think it was 35-3 to at halftime. Yeah, it was 35-3 to at halftime, and then the game ended up 38-3 to where the Bucks just kind of stopped caring. So let's just run down these scores again in case you were paying attention in the NFL. <sighs> 30 to 18, 30, 31 to 5, 38 to 3, 33 to 22, 54 to 13, 25 to 3, 41 to 17, 27 to 3. It was not an entertaining day of football. Monday Night Football game tonight, Saints and Seahawks. Let's take a look at what's going on in that game. The New Orleans Saints are favored by four and a half points. Russell Wilson not expected to play. It's the Geno Smith show where... Pete Carroll will run the ball 100,000 times. Doesn't really know what else to do. I'm looking at some gambling stuff. Let's see. We're scrolling. We're scrolling. Total touchdowns. What's oh, Bovada's got the total touchdowns at three and a half, so that's going to be a snooze fest also. Monday night football is going to be boring. It's, it's just a weird penalty that we're paying for <laughs> the real... Remember two weeks ago how great it was? It was like the greatest week of football anyone has ever seen. And now we're paying the price. Cool moment in the Arizona Cardinals game. Zach Ertz was traded from the Eagles to the Cardinals. He had to sit out a game just to get caught up on the playbook. I think he's from the Arizona area. And regardless, he kind of heard that he was going to be traded on Thursday morning. Then he kind of begs to play and the trade hadn't gone through. So they have to play him. So they didn't sit him, which was really stupid, but it was nice. They win, but they don't win the game. He gets a touchdown. He says goodbye to the, the Eagles. He pays 20 grand to have a full page spread in the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer. And then uh, first game, second game in Arizona, first game in Arizona, he has the longest touchdown of his career. We'll watch right it on now YouTube. And just throws a pretty watch this football. catch. Oh, man. And leap. Wide got it. Opening. Over his shoulder. Ertz. Gets Ertz. a block. 15, 30 yards 10, after the catch. Five. Touchdown, Arizona. Ertz was always critiqued for yards after the catch problem. Not a problem there against Arizona. Let's look at what else happened in the world of sports. Uh, I want to go to, we'll do some more college football stuff tomorrow. I want to talk about the weird Oklahoma, Kansas thing that happened. Kansas gave up a good effort, but I, I can't even cover that at, at a certain point because Kansas is just like, they're never going to win those games. They never win those. They're like Indiana. The Kraken scored their first goal at home. And it was lit up. Their jerseys are filthy. They have such a cool brand going on right now. Listen. Oh, man. It is just lit up. This crowd, yeah, the, 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 the Seattle fans are losing them. People are jumping up and down. Vince Dunn with 3.2 seconds to go in the first. Unbelievable. The first ever goal. So the Kraken, that, that's a cool storyline. James Harden. All right, we'll, we'll do some NBA stuff. Here's, some, here's something you got to watch. We all hate James Harden. And if you don't watch basketball, you hate James Harden, too, because he's like, what exemplifies the worst parts of millennials and the worst parts of Gen Z as well? He's so smart, and he's, he's disrupted the game so much, he figured out that he's so much more athletic than the guys that are covering him that he would get them in the air to try to block his shot. He would pivot in, in midair and then kind of bump into them on purpose so that it would be a foul. That rule was changed this season because that kind of stuff is annoying. It's beyond the spirit of basketball. And the annoyingness about it has a lot to do with the fact that James Harden is annoying, but also that stopping the game that much is annoying for a non-basketball play. Through... Three games, Jaden, James Harden has only attempted nine free throws. He led the league in free throw attempts for the last like three or four years, him and Joel Embiid. And uh, Steve Nash, the head coach and former uh, superstar of the Phoenix Suns, says that James Harden has become the poster board. Yeah, he has become the poster board, and we are all getting the retribution that we so rightly deserve. James Harden has annoyed the crap out of us forever and ever and ever, and now he will pay the price. Let's take a look at what's going to happen in college football this weekend. It's another, uh, no, it's a better slate. I, I don't understand how this happens. As the season rounds into form, the games somehow get better. Like, there are dud weeks, but as we turn the corner on October, the last Saturday in October, we have some good games, uh, weirdly. Michigan, Michigan State kicks off at noon. This is the week for all of the Michiganders. If you follow Michigander Twitter, watch it. They're going to complain about that game kicking off at noon because Fox selected that game at noon because they've got the World Series later in the day, and then ESPN took Penn State, Ohio State, which was also a top-10 matchup when they picked it, but now it's not. Whew. Yeah. 
So Michigan, Michigan State kicks off at noon. I love that. Please don't waste my Saturday. Iowa at Wisconsin. I think that Wisconsin's going to win that game. Just got feeling. Georgia and Florida. Florida's pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if they take down number one Georgia. Ole Miss and Auburn is probably the second or third best game of the weekend. Yeah, that's a ranked on ranked matchup. Ole Miss, 10th in the country. How about that? Kentucky's going on the road to Mississippi State. I fully expect the Bulldogs to win that game. And number 20, Penn State is on the road at number five. Ohio State will completely depend on the health of their quarterback if that game is even worth watching. Big matchup in the Mountain West as well, Fresno State and San Diego State. We'll get into that, but it's it's. I'm, I'm just trying to give you hope. The college football season is not going to suck moving forward, and we're going to do some World Series stuff this week, and we're going to shit on the Niners. And what else are we going to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to break down some rules. People complaining about the refs. Is it just them complaining, or are the refs actually bad for the first time? Hey, Mike, let's, uh, let's talk about some more candy. It's because they have gummy everything. Uh-huh. And then, uh, but uh, um, the, uh, yeah. you know, they have those Do Nerds they? Clusters, which is new. <laughs> yeah, which is good. The Nerds Clusters is good. And then if you go chocolate, uh, probably Almond Joy. Almond Joy from Mike Leach right there. Halloween, one week from last Sunday. Whoa, six days from today. This is interesting to see. Like, rate, review, subscribe. I'm going to shit on the Niners this week, folks. It's going to be exciting. Be back and better than ever tomorrow morning. <laughs>